Okay, this video tutorial looks at the mathematical strand of investments and more specifically, we're going to focus our understanding on the different types of borrowing that we can do. So essentially, what is borrowing? So borrowing is basically when you are lent money uh, from a financial institution, which you eventually need to repay or to pay back. All right. Um, and there's a few different ways. A couple of examples are through loans. So house loans, car loans, personal loans. Uh, credit cards or lines of credit. And we're going to explore these different options a little bit uh, further in this video. So credit cards. Most of you uh, hopefully probably have a debit Visa card, not a credit card. Given that a debit card, you can only spend the money that you actually have. A credit card allows you to spend money you don't have um, under the impression that you are then going to be able to pay it back. So they're used, normally used to purchase items and then you pay off the credit card at a later date. Um, so it's essentially borrowing money. Uh, this is also known as purchasing on credit. All right. Um, so often credit card debts uh, or debts inter incur a fee. Okay, so usually this is annually. Um, it can also incur when repayments are not made on time. So credit cards are probably no good for people who aren't able to budget their money. Um, but to be fair, if you could budget your money, you probably wouldn't need a credit card in the first place. Um, there is also often interest accumulated on the credit card purchases. So you normally pay for something, you get about a month to pay it back. If you can't pay it back in that time, you'll get a fee, but you'll also get interest uh, added to the money that you've borrowed. Uh, we're going to go through an example question in a minute, which will give you a bit of an idea about what I'm talking about. So we've got an example question here where we're looking at the use of a credit card. Uh, in this particular case, this uh, person has bought a laptop for $450 on June the 15th. Okay, and she's used her Visa card, all right, um, with an interest rate of 16.9%. Um, and her statement is showing that the purchase arrived on June the 27th, okay? She's given 25 days. So 25 days she's got to pay it back, all right, which gets her up until July 22nd. These are all very important uh, information in order for us to work out how long she's got to pay it back. So the first part says uh, effectively what is what is the effective interest rate, uh, interest free period? So that means how long has she got basically to pay the money back before she gets charged interest on that purchase? Now, we can have it actually have a look down here and we've got the answers with us here. So she buys it on the, on the 15th of June, all right? So she's got the rest of June, which is 15 days. That's how we get this 15 days here. Okay, June having 30 days. Uh, if you don't know your days in your months, you probably better sort that out uh, before you have a crack at this. But we've got an extra 15 days left in June. We then know that she's got up until July 22nd. All right, so she's got another 22 days. If we add them together, that's where we get our 37 days. So she's effectively got 37 days to pay the money back. All right, after that date, or after those amount of days, she's gonna start getting interest charged on this purchase. So question one, or question B, I should say, uh, we've talked about A, so we've, that's, we've explained why we got 37 days. B says calculate the interest she's charged if she pays before the July 22nd, all right? She pays before July 22nd, she gets no interest charged because she's paid within the 37 days, which is great, good on her. Um, but if she pays, because the second part says pays on July 25th, now this is three days after the effective interest free period is finished, okay, because that finishes on um, July 22nd, okay, three days after. But over here you'll notice she's got to pay interest for 40 days. And we get this because we've got the 37 days, okay, interest free, and we're adding the three extra days, which got us to the 25th of July. All right, so she's not just paying interest on three days, she's paying interest on 40 days, all right? The only bonus is, if she'd paid it off by, uh, on the 22nd or before the 22nd, she wouldn't have paid any days interest, 
Okay, so that's where that 40 days comes from. In case you were a little bit concerned or confused why there's 40 days now, it's because we've had to take our interest-free 37 days and add the three days that she's late. Gives us our 40 days. All right, so that's where this comes from. Now, she's being charged for 40 days interest. All right, the interest is calculated on the principal, all right, which is 450, so this looks like a simple interest formula, multiplied by our interest rate, all right, multiplied by the number of years. So in this case, we've worked out um, the percentage of, of a year. So we've got the 40 days divided by 365 days, because that's how much is in a year. So that gets us to years. All right, and then she's obviously being charged $8.33. So we just talked about uh, credit cards and how if you don't pay off by a certain time, you end up paying an interest on that credit purchase. Here we're looking at lines of credit. Okay, so basically a line of credit is also known as an overdraft. Normally, okay, this basically gives the buyer or the purchaser access to a certain amount of credit um, and up to a certain limit, all right? Um, and you can access as, as little or as much of that uh, limit as you want. Um, and interest is only charged to the money that you actually use, not to the whole lot all right, of that credit. Um, the thing that you need to know about lines of credit is they're usually secured against um, the borrowers or the, purchase, uh, the purchaser um, an asset that they might have, such as a house or a boat or a you know, a piece of land or a, a business, all right? So let's say you own, a, own your house and your house is worth $450,000. Um, you might have a line of credit of $50,000 that you can spend. I say you, you basically um, put it up against your house, secure it against your house um, and say, yep, I own this, um, this $450,000 house. I would like you to give me $50,000 because I'll be able to pay it back. If I can't pay it back, you can, the bank can then have some of the house. That's what essentially the overdraft or lines of credit mean. So if the borrower is unable to pay back the credit that they've got through their line of credit, then the lender, and the lender is the bank or the financial institution, I'll put bank because it's easier to understand, uh, the bank has the right to sell that asset. Okay, so they could sell the person's house if they can't pay back the line of credit. And this is the, uh, they do this because the bank wants to get their money back. All right, they don't want to live, lend money and not get it back. So with overdraft, it's not necessarily a credit card, but if you can't pay it back, it means that the asset that you've got secured against for the overdraft, it means you may, you may give up that asset. Now we're gonna have a look at an example question um, that goes through lines of credit. So here's a, uh, an example question. Okay, on May 1, Bronte obtained a $20,000 line of credit with her bank, good on her, at an investment rate of 5.25%. So let's look at some important things. We've got $20,000 line of credit on May the 1st, 5.25% per annum. She withdrew $10,000 on May the 11th and another six on June the 19th. So it says find the interest paid in May. Now. We've got the answers here and we're gonna talk through the answers. So she's got no interest charged until the May the 11th. That's because that was the first day that she actually withdrew some money on that line of credit. So beforehand, she's not paying interest because she hasn't withdrawn anything. So from the 11th of May until the 31st of May, again, you need to know your days and your months, that gives us 21 days. So for 21 days, the balance of her line of credit is $10,000. So using our simple interest formula, we work out that $10,000 is what she um, borrowed, there's the interest rate, and 21, this is similar to the previous slides where we talked about getting our days into years, all right, gave us interest of $30.21, all right, so we can see here we've got $30.21 of interest for May. Now, it says that she didn't actually take out another $6,000 until June the 19th. So that means from June the 1st until June the 18th, the balance was still $10,000. All right, we do the exact same thing as we did in A, 
and we find out that we've got uh, an interest of $25.89, okay, which is down here. All right, so this comes there. We then have to work out the balance of 16,000 because she had 10,000 out and then another 6,000 gives us 16,000. And that was from the 19th of June until the 30th of June, which is 12 days. So we now do um, our process again. So we've done it three times now. But again, we're using, we're changing our P this time, and we've got a change of number of days. Okay, you can see the days have changed each time. Now for the end of June, we've got $27.62. All right, so what she now has to do to work out her total interest is she needs to work out um, the total by adding the first part of June to the second part of June to get her answer which obviously is going to be $53.51. Okay, now the last of our three uh, borrowing methods that we're gonna discuss in this video are about loans. And we're specifically looking at personal loans here. Um, but this reply, uh, refers to, or can be applied to, um, car loans, house loans, um, all sorts of loans. So. Looking at personal loans, they're often used to purchase more expensive items. And we're looking at cars, boats, renovations, uh, educational expenses, etc., etc. So they're often given out as one large sum of money, but they're repaid in a series of smaller regular payments over time. All right, so you're not expected to be able to pay back what you borrowed in one go. Uh, the interest on personal loans is calculated on the reducing balance of the loan. So what that means is, as the loan gets smaller, you're paying less interest, okay? Because the amount that you owe is getting less each time. However, okay, and there's a big however. However, oh, that's pretty bad, let's do that again. However, the interest is added back onto the loan, okay? So they calculate the interest and they chuck it back on the loan so then you will actually have to pay more interest the longer you have the loan, all right? Um, that's really important to note, okay? That the, the interest just gets added back onto the loan. Um, so the loan, you, while you're paying it off, it actually does creep back up a little bit, uh, but hopefully you're paying off more than the interest is getting put back on. Uh, another thing to understand is that personal loans often incur a fee, um, to set them up as well as ongoing fees throughout the loan. So let's have a look at an example question Okay, so we have an example question here about personal loans and this involves Erica taking out a personal loan of 16,500 to buy a car. So the first thing we want to identify $16,500 she's buying a car congratulations, which is great um, and she's managed to negotiate a loan of four years all right, and the interest she's paying is 5.5%. So we're gonna use the table here, okay, to, of monthly repayments per $1,000. So we're just gonna uh, highlight a few things. We've got, she's at four years, that's the loan. She's got an interest rate of 5.5%, which means that her annual interest rate uh, sorry, which means her monthly repayments per $1,000 is going to be 23.2565. All right, that's really important. We'll talk about that in a minute. So first question says calculate her month. Oh, whoops. Don't want highlighter. I want pen. Calculate her monthly repayments. So the first thing we need to do from the table, the monthly repayments on each $1,000 for four years is this. We've identified that. Okay, there it is. <coughs> so therefore, the repayments on the amount of loan that she's got is the rate times by 16.5 because this is 16.5 lots of 1,000 or 16,500 divided by 1,000. That's how we get this number here, okay? Um, simply because it says up here per $1,000. That's why we divide by 1,000 over here. That means that her monthly repayments are going to be $383.73, basically 73 cents. Okay, um, but it does say here, which is very important, 
Monthly repayments are always rounded up to the next 10 cents. So hence, this becomes $383.80 per month. Okay, so that is just our answer rounded. Our next question says the total repayment. All right, so she's got a four year loan. So 48 months, all right, is equal to four years because there's 12 months in a year. So we times her monthly repayment, which we just worked out, times that by her months for the loan, which is 48, and that gives us a total of $18,422.40. Now, as far as the last question goes, it says, what's her interest charged? Now, the interest is basically the total money that she repays, or a total repayment, take away the original amount, the amount she borrowed. I won't draw over it because it's going to get confusing. Um, let's go with this. So we've got total repayments, take away the amount that she borrowed, and that's going to give us an answer of $1,922.40. Go back to my pen. There we go. All right, so that's going to be the interest that she's going to pay on her personal loan. Now, this particular video won't have any practice questions for you. Um, I'm sure we'll be able to do some in class, but uh, just have a look at these example questions, take some notes, and that'll be fantastic. Thanks. Bye.